the world's a dangerous place. Get the industry's original and most trusted laser sighting system from Crimson Trace. A laser and light systems will enhance your effectiveness and help keep you and your family out of harm's way. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, a competitive shooter who's won the Bianchi Cup and unmatched 15 times, plus a world-class pistol smith, a campus carry bill in Nevada, and more. To be on the show, call 866-TALK-GUN. That's 866-825-5486. Now, here's Tom. Oh, man, do we have a full plate today. We have so much to talk about. Ammo. <laughs> Another run on ammo? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to be talking about the uh, the M855 proposed ammo ban by the ATF. Out of this, of course. Not just anti-gun, but pro-gun ban administration. I mean, come on. Are we surprised? Obama said on the front end, before he got elected the first time, I want to ban guns. And then he said when he was president, I want to ban guns. And then he says one of my big regrets is I didn't get to ban guns. And uh, let's see, Eric Holder on his way out as attorney general says his one major regret is that he didn't get to ban guns. Is anybody surprised? They say, well, we can't get the guns. Let's start chipping away at the ammo. So the question on the floor for you is, did you run out and buy some? Yes, 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 I know. It contributes to the problem. Yeah, I did. Okay, we'll get into that in a little bit. A lot of things going on. We're going to be talking with a, an incredible competitive shooter, a quarter of a century at the very top of his game. Also, uh, another competitive shooter, a gunsmith, and we're going to be talking about the GT20, the incredible, by the way, 30 days left, or 30, 31 days. Tick, 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 tick. The Gun Talk Gun of the Year, the GT20. We're taking orders until the end of this month, so you have 31 days. So there you go. If you don't get in, in line, if you don't get your order in, too bad. You miss. Simple as that. We'll be talking about that. But I do want us to spin right immediately to the latest court case, which affects you. I don't care where you live. And this is important. I don't care where you live. This thing in California affects you. Joining us right now is Gene Hoffman from Cal Guns Foundation. Gene, welcome. Thank you, Tom. Good to be on. The, I guess what I do want to explain first is if you could give us the cliff notes of the case, what it is, and why it's important to everybody in the country, and then we could talk about what just happened. Exactly. So it's probably worth me backing up and explaining what's happened with the handgun roster here in California. Yes. So, uh, you know, 15 years ago, California passed a drop test, and the original intent was supposedly as a kind of consumer safety uh Measure, but really, it was an attempt to uh, make sure that you know so-called Saturday Night Specials or cheap guns weren't available to poor people. Uh, you know, make no mention about how unconstitutional that part of it is. Mm-hmm. Now, the roster kind of moved forward. A few other states adopted rosters. You know, Maryland, Massachusetts, others. Um, but the roster was relatively workable, at least from a Californian's perspective, until about six or seven years ago, they implemented a requirement to have a loaded chamber indicator and a magazine disconnect on all new semi-automatic weapons. Okay, if, I, course, if I could, Gene, you know, let me jump in. Hey, Gene, would you explain what the roster is and how it works and the fact that if a gun's not on the roster, it doesn't make it to the dealer shelf? Yeah, exactly. So the way this works is every manufacturer has to submit about five guns to California to have them to test, tested almost to destruction. If they pass, then they're on this list, and this is the list of the only handguns that Californians can buy. Okay, good. Exactly. All right, proceed, please. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we had the additional uh, item of a loaded chamber indicator and a magazine disconnect. And, of course, California had a unique and almost impossible definition for a loaded chamber, chamber indicator. And, you know, this is about the same time that the Heller decision comes down. And, you know, very clearly the arms protected by Heller are handguns. Um, certainly for possession in your home. So uh, we sued California right after uh, the Second Amendment was incorporated here in California, first, right before McDonald. Um, that case had been pending for about five years, and during those five years, California had passed and then actually made um, 
implemented a micro stamping requirement. Um, for those who've never dealt with micro stamping, this is a, a bit of unicorn dust that anti gun folks think can identify uh, fired brass after you know it was left at a crime scene. Of course, it doesn't actually work at the mechanical level. It will you know, wear off very quickly. Certainly can't do what the California law requires of it. And so effectively what California has done is made it so that no new semi-automatic handgun will ever be available for sale to California residents. Okay, at this point, let me, let, me step, let, hey, hey, G, let me step in because the reason you say none of them will be available is because the gun makers say, we can't do this. This is impossible. It cannot be done. Uh, Mike Pfeiffer from Ruger says, we simply won't be able to make a gun that's available for sale in California. Fair that's enough? right. It's unicorn dust. You know, it's, uh, it's, well, somebody dreamed it up, so of course it's possible, but in fact, it's not possible at all. So now there's no way for new guns to get on the California roster. And in fact, the mm-hmm. really troubling problem is, is that as manufacturers make, you know, the usual kinds of enhancements and safety feature enhancements and other things, then their guns become uneligible to be on the roster. So in fact, for example, as a Californian, you can't buy a Gen 4 Glock. Because they made a change in it, and any kind of change slash improvement, as far as California goes, that makes it a new gun. It has to be reintroduced and resubmitted for approval, and now, if it doesn't have micro-stamping, it is automatically disqualified. They won't even accept it to be reviewed if it doesn't have micro-stamping. That's correct. And it also has to have a loaded chamber indicator and a magazine disconnect. And, you know, a lot of folks, uh, for very good reasons, don't want a magazine disconnect on their new semi-automatic handgun. So, okay, you know, so we're, fa- we're faced right now with, you have this list, this roster, and it's getting smaller and smaller every month as guns fall off, but nothing new can come on. So where does that right. end up taking us? Well, it ends up taking us to a ban on all semi-automatic handguns in California. So, you know, it's a creeping incremental ban. Um, It's a really, really obviously unconstitutional law. And, of course, as I said, CalGuns Foundation and Second Amendment Foundation partnered together, sued about five years ago, and finally got a decision last week. And it was pretty darn, well, silly, frankly. Bizarre. Bizarre. Yeah, so the decision basically said, well, you know, since you can buy some handguns, the restriction on selling handguns isn't actually a burden on the Second Amendment at all. (laughs) <laughs> okay. So, so not I mean, only did they took not you do like, any <laughs> analysis, right? Normally, at least right. you get the intermediate scrutiny two-step. They didn't even mm-hmm. do that. So it took you like minutes before you filed an appeal. I believe we had it done under two hours. Um, yeah. the, you know, the whole point here, we've always known whoever won here in the district court, that this would be decided either in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals or in front of the Supreme Court. Um, and this was a companion case. Um, originally, we had sued uh, D.C. Uh, with Second Amendment Foundation and others when D.C. Mm-hmm. had adopted California's roster. Um, D.C. was smart enough to realize all the constitutional problems with that roster and significantly changed it so that D.C. residents have quite a few handguns available to them. Okay, now there are those who are going to say, oh, gee, it's going to go to the Ninth Circuit, then you have no chance. And I would submit that actually, bizarrely enough, the Ninth Circuit has not been our enemy on a lot of these things. No, in fact, the Ninth Circuit's adopted very real levels of scrutiny. There are, there are a couple outlier cases, like Jackson, which was sure. about the San Francisco ammo, right? But, you know, we have basically look like we're going to prevail on, on carry here in the Ninth Circuit. Um, mm. A lot of folks look at the Ninth Circuit and think California and crazy. They forget about Oregon and Washington and Alaska and Nevada. You know, judges from all those places mean that you've got a very different perspective on what the right to arms means. And there's another thing, which is even the most liberal or at least anti-gun judges in the Court of Appeals understand the implications of undermining rights. Because, of course, you know, if, gee, we're going to limit severely which handguns we can buy, I guess that the state of Nevada can limit severely which abortions women can get, or the state of Washington can decide that you can't get a Koran. Right. The, these are real issues have. that the Court of Appeals tend to take a little more seriously than district courts do. OK, and um, I want to make a to make a fine point on this. And it's a good point there, Jim. He says, OK, so somebody sitting in Wyoming is saying, well, why do I care? Because this actually goes beyond just a handgun roster. It could mean if somebody says, well, we're going to go back to let's spin back 35 years and we're going to ban so-called Saturday night specials. 
or any other type of legitimate handgun, and they're all legitimate as far as I'm concerned, then if you could get a good solid ruling here, it says, no, you can't do that because that impacts the Second Amendment. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, and I mean, look, the actual underlying logic of this case is that if the uh, government allowed you to have a single firearm, you know, you could buy a, you know, single shot 22, that that would be enough to protect the right to arms. Ah. All right, so where do we go now? What's the timing on this? Well, you know, we obviously have filed very quickly for an appeal. It usually takes about 90 days for us to file an opening. Um, we'll obviously do that as fast as we can. You know, usually the Ninth Circuit is relatively quick about hearing oral arguments, so I'd say in about six months um, you'll hear that. And then, you know, after that, things can be uh, harder to estimate. Anywhere from six to nine months after that period, we'll actually get a decision. Could this end up going to the U.S. Supreme Court? It absolutely could. Um, This is one of those core kind of uh, Heller follow-up litigations. You know, Heller said you have the right to arms. This is asking the question, you know, which arms? And, you know, certainly most semi-automatic handguns fall in the arms that have to be protected in common use. Exactly. Uh, For those of us who want to stay up on this, uh, you're going to be updating us at the CalGuns Foundation website? Yeah, calgunsfoundation.org slash roster, R-O-S-T-E-R. All right, calgunsfoundation.org slash roster. Gene Hoffman, always a pleasure having you here, and I really appreciate the way you put this in terms that even I can understand. Thank you, my friend. All right, uh, thank you, Gene. 866-TALK-GUN will get you in here. 866-TALK-GUN. What have you been shooting? And the real question is, did you go out and buy some ammo this week? Did this whole thing about the uh, possible ban on 223 ammo get to you? Did, did you go to the stores? A lot of people did. 866-TALK-GUN. Making news 30 years ago, the modern internet made strides when five supercomputers were linked to form a network. It was the same year ArmScore entered the U.S. market. What a coincidence. Why not use the Internet to celebrate? Get big online discounts and rebates on the world's number one selling 1911s from Rock Island Armory and quality ammunition from Armscore. Get yours at armscore.com slash gun talk. Armscore, USA strong for 30 years. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. For six years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. The Ruger American Rimfire Rifle combines features of the Ruger American Rifle and innovations of the 1022 Rimfire Rifle to appeal to all bolt-action enthusiasts. It features a modular stock system that provides comb height options for scope or iron sight use, a power bedding integral bedding block system for outstanding accuracy, a Ruger Marksman adjustable trigger, and a 1022 style rotary magazine for reliable feeding. The Ruger American Rimfire Rifle, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. All right, back with you. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. 866-825-5486. A lot of things going on. Uh, Let's see. Oh, last week, last week. You have one week left to enter for a chance to win the Springfield Armory XD Mod 2. That's a 45 ACP. 3.3 3.3 inch barrel, subcompact. You can choose your choice, uh, bitone or black. You can you know, look at the, the gun at Springfield Armory, but you can also go to guntalk.com slash win, W I N. It doesn't cost you anything. All you do is you get signed up for the Gun Talk newsletter, which is an email newsletter that you get for free whenever I get around to it. It's not very regular. 
but that's just me. Uh, <laughs> and you can always unsubscribe if you want to. But why would you? You get news and information. So you get a chance to uh, enter to win this. Let's see. We have our uh, new, both of our new DVDs, First Person Defender Season 1 and Concealed Carry 2, are up uh, running at shopguntalk.com. A lot of good things going on there. I did like this story. I think you'll like this, too. This is in Prague, or Pragu, if you prefer. Uh, <laughs> in Prague, rabbis from European countries gathered in Prague Tuesday for training in self-defense and first aid in response to a wave of attacks against Jews and the a rise of anti-Semitism on the continent. In a stunning beginning of a training session, knives were distributed to dozens of rabbis, young and old, before they received instruction and practiced what to do, surviving stabbing, and how to treat injuries. Feels like a repeat of a movie, doesn't it? Like from, oh, the 1930s, and the rise of anti-Semitism, and Jews who don't have guns to protect themselves and others. I'm just going, wow, really? Knives against terrorists. Okay. The uh, Mall of America, of course, continues to have its no gun signs up. Uh, always, always an effective way to stop terrorists who plan to shoot lots of people or blow up things. When they see that no gun sign, baby, they're gone. They'll turn around. I got to go somewhere else. Smart. I, I actually got an interesting letter from a friend that he he wanted me to look it over before he sent it to Mall of America. And, and I told him, I said, look, you know it's not going to do any good, but I also understand that you it makes you feel better, and why not? And essentially, he said, here's the deal, guys. He said, you got these signs up, and you know it's not going to stop a terrorist. You know this. So I'm left with two choices. One is I can take my money someplace else, which I will do for the most part. And two, I can just go ahead and carry in your mall, which I will do sometimes, and you won't know about it. So there it is. And if that makes you nervous, get over it, because I've been carrying in your mall all along, as have a lot of other good people. So I don't know. I guess, you know, how do you handle that? I, I hear different people do different things. When you're carrying and you come across a no gun sign at a store, restaurant, place. Do you, A, ignore it and go on in and not worry about it, figuring that, hey, the only way they're going to know about this is if I have to pull it, and if I have to pull it, I just, you know, I don't care because I had to save my life. B, go in and figure my plan is, oh, gee, I didn't see the sign. I just missed that. Yeah, exactly. C, go back to your car and disarm yourself and go in. Or D, Turn around and go somewhere else, and I would hope that if you do that, that you also contact the owner slash manager and say, you know, I like the whole idea of calling and asking to speak to the manager and say, God, you know, I, I came to your place, I had a, a party, we were going to eat there, and I was turned away at the door. And of course, the manager thinking that some employee turned you away, and so you go, no, I just, I mean, you had the sign there, it says you didn't want me in there, you know, and it, it, you, know, you know, you're kind of playing the game, but at the same time, you're making the point that I have money. I am a good guy. I'm a good gal. We're a good family. We're responsible. We're safe. I've been caring for years. And you have decided that you don't want my business. So I don't know. It's, uh, you know, I can actually take any of those positions. And frankly, I have done all of those things. And yes, I have carried where they had a no gun sign. I mean, come on. Really? Seriously? <laughs> it's a, that's a, uh, young lady that we do some work with in another part of the country told me in the last couple of weeks, he said, yes, I, I see the signs. No, I'm not going to take my gun out of my purse. Are you kidding me? <laughs> she says, okay. Yeah, I, I get it. Had a, uh, let's see, another Domino's driver, a woman, in case you don't know, Domino's prohibits its drivers from having guns. Another Domino's driver was raped. How's that working out for you? Well, working out well for them. They're not responsible for the rape, and all they're caring about is 
gee, we could get sued if one of our drivers actually protects herself somewhere. So their risk management people look at it and go, let's see. Employee gets hurt. There's possible costs there. Employee misuses gun. More costs there. What's the cost analysis? We can always get more drivers. Does that sound callous and cruel on my part? I would hope so. Sure sounds callous and cruel on their part. So there you go. Okay. I had so much fun on Friday. Went out and shot the new GT20. This is the new SIG P220 pistol in 10 millimeter. Now, there are several different variations out. I spec this. I've been trying to get SIG to do this for eh, close to three years now. Been talking with them. And not the only one, of course. I don't take credit for this at all. Other people are doing this. And Bruce Gray, who's going to be on the show a little bit later, he's been taking P220s and making 10 millimeters out of them for several years. But I spec this one out just the way I liked it. And there are others out there, but I don't know of any other that has the single action trigger pull, which is phenomenal. It is so good. And adjustable target sights, a fiber optic front sight. Uh, it's got the rail, of course. Let's see, ambidextrous safety. And the grip is really neat. It's uh, P220s have a, in my hand, they feel just the standard grip. Feels a little bit fat, a little chunky. And this one is a little thinner. It's a made of G10 material. It's confusing. you got a G10 and GT20 gun. Uh, but G10 material, and it is thinner and feels really good. It's a single stack gun. Anyway, took it to the range. We shot some video. We'll post that this coming week, and you'll be able to really see the gun. But what I found was the recoil was so light. Now, it's a heavy gun. That's what's going on. You've got a five-inch barrel, all-steel gun. Yeah, it's heavy. That's the way it is. It, it feels good when you shoot it. It would be a great hunting gun. Uh, but using, you know, there are different levels of loads. There's kind of light loads. There's nothing. And then I went to some of the double-tap loads. And even with the heavier loads, it shot, I swear, I think there are nines that kick a lot more than this, particularly the smaller nines. This was just a pleasure to shoot. Um, just utterly delightful. I had so much fun with it. Very accurate, more accurate than I am, but then aren't they all? Uh, I just, and I didn't get to shoot it a lot. We just went out for an hour or so. So can't wait to get back out there. If you have an interest in the GT20, the clock is ticking at the end of this month. We're going to stop taking orders. If you want one, go to durysguns.com, D-U-R-Y-S guns.com, Dury's, D-U-R-Y-S guns.com. All right, 866-TALK-GUN. When we come back, we'll take your calls right here on Gun Talk. Want to be a guest on the show? Drop us a line at info at guntalk.com. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. All right, back with the 866 Talk Gun. I have to pass this along to you. Okay, this is just, it's a guy thing, all right? I get it. It's stupid. It's, but it's, oh my gosh, it's so funny. Uh, on the web uh, at Recoil Web, that's recoilweb.com. These guys put together one of the funnier satirical videos I have ever seen. Um, if you're easily offended, don't go there. Nothing nasty or anything. And it really is probably, probably safe for work. <laughs> it, it Basically, it's a, uh, it's a commercial for a 900 line, but it's called 1900 TAC Talk, where you call in and they say operators are standing by, but they're special forces operators, and they'll talk tactical stuff to you over the phone. <laughs> And they'll, they'll say, oh, man, no, is that a, uh, could you work that slide for me? It's, it's pretty funny. It's uh, recoilweb.com. It's fun to see a, a real sense of humor with some of this stuff. Oh, my goodness. But some stuff is not funny. And, uh, well, I tell you what, joining us right now for the first time, I uh, very much appreciate Montana Congressman Ryan Zinke is joining us. First U.S. Navy SEAL to be elected to Congress. How are you, Congressman? Hey, great to be with you. I appreciate it. I, I thought you'd probably get a kick out of the uh, 900 TAC talk anyway. <laughs> it's well, it's you, pretty crazy. You know, the, you know, special forces guys are special. You know, they, uh, <laughs> they are very, very bright. I just love being around them. Yeah, they, you know, they really are. It's, it, if you've hung around with them a bunch, you know that they are bright. They're sharp because you don't make the cut without that. 
but they're also um, special. How's that? <laughs> you know, they really, they really are. And I got to say, the level of commitment, dedication, you know, you, you often talk about it, but when you see it, how good these guys really are, uh, mm-hmm. you know, my hat's off to them. I think our nation will be in debt for generations to come with these guys. I was actually, it's funny you mentioned it. I, last week I was talking to a fellow who special forces and trains with them and, tra- and trains them. I asked him, I said, how good are the, the really good ones? He says, you simply have no idea how fast they can shoot at small targets in a stressful situation. You just don't have any idea. Well, and you know, in, in my generation, you know, we were developing prototypes and looking at bringing technology to the battlefield. And I got to tell you, this generation has mastered it. Uh, and mm. this is why I feel so much better uh, about our future. You know, knowing what I've seen and the quality of, of the Special Forces family and, and, and the military as a whole, I, I think the quality mm-hmm. has gone up. Um, you know, I'm concerned, obviously, of, of a diminishing force structure. Uh, about, about, you know, this, this administration is particularly tough on uh, looking at numbers that, that are just do not make sense. Well, let me ask you specifically about this proposed ban by the ATF, i.e. the Obama administration, on green tip ammo, M855 ammo, 223 surplus yep. ammo, which literally does not qualify under the specifications as ammo, or, or, or rather armor-piercing, and yet they want to classify it as armor-piercing and ban it. Well, at first, are we shocked? Uh, you know, the, the previous election, we said he's going to fundamentally change our country. And mm-hmm. still, uh, you know, there were 6 million Republicans that were kind of the sidelines that, that didn't get out and vote, you know, compared to the, the previous election of McCain Palin. And mm-hmm. then somehow we're shocked uh, when this administration does it. And, and this is a <laughs> lawless administration between. Illegal amnesty, he said 22 times he didn't have the authority, and then he did it. And uh, then, of course, his, his Constitution, you know, which, you know, I, I swore an oath to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I did that as a, as a commander, and I, I was honored to do it once again as a congressman. And, you know, when you, and I had the honor a couple weeks ago to, to be the Speaker of the Day. And when you're in the House of Representatives, you know, it's, it's, it's very humbling. But above the speaker, etched in stone, is in God we trust. And across the, in the, in the gallery, up on top, are medallions of great men that have delivered law through the course of mankind. And directly across, looking at the speaker, is Moses. So when you oh. give your oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, so help me God. You know, it means something. And this is going to be a fight. It's going to be a fight about illegal amnesty. It's going to be a fight about the Second Amendment and and on some things that are, that are non-negotiable with me. You know, family, what? faith, uh, the Constitution. And in Montana, you better add guns and coal. So, okay, we've got this ATF proposed ban on ammunition that they quite literally do not have the authority to do, but they're going to do it. You know, Obama and his administration has basically said, we're going to do what we're going to do. See if you can stop us. That's the game that they're playing. So will the Congress step in to try to stop this? Well, yes. Uh, you know, I, I, think, I think we have you know, enough numbers uh, that understand what's at stake. And, you know, case in point, I keep on going back to the illegal amnesty. It's not really about the DHS bill. And it's not really an argument about amnesty per se. It's about the Constitution. And if you, if you take an oath to defend it, and when you know that something is willfully and knowingly in violation of the Constitution, you can't support it. And, and so defunding it is, is where Congress has its power. And Congress can defund uh, the ATF and making uh-huh. sure that they don't have enough money to execute this uh, and, and and rise. And this is where you know, Congress is closest to the people, and and I believe that it, it's the people's house. And for a while, Congress was silent, and and uh-huh. I don't think Congress should be anymore. We're an equal branch so- of the government. We have to exercise our our power and authority. 
So what do you need from us? Well, certainly, you know, you know what helps is, is, that, is that people listen, and I think they're starting to get it. And if, and if people would would reach out to your, your, your local congressman, uh, reach out to the ATF, they're in public uh, you know, hearing period, and, and, mm-hmm. and write it, letters to the, to the editor. And we need to take this country back, and it's got to be done by grassroots and, and respecting the authority within the Constitution and how important the Second Amendment is. And look, I'm from Montana. You know, and when you're in Montana, you grow up you know, around guns, you grow up around hunting, you, and the Second Amendment is a part of the fabric of, of traditional life. And I, I think there's some things that we need to defend. And certainly, you know, follow, 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 follow us, you know, Ryan Zinke, and, and uh, you can Google me. I'm pretty Googleable, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, help me win this fight. There you go. You, you go to zinke.house.gov, and that'll get you Z-I-N-K-E. For those who are figuring it out, Z-I-N-K-E, zinke.house.gov, and you can sign up and follow what you're doing there. Congressman, I just want to thank you, first of all, for your service uh, in the Navy and as a SEAL and also for what you're doing in, in Congress because, boy, we need some help. Well, we do. You know, and the good thing is this. Just like the, the Special Forces are, I think, the best that they've ever been, you know, I think our country has really good people. We have an energy play that we could be you know, independent uh, for our energy needs and not be held hostage. Uh, I think our people work hard. Uh, our Constitution is, is, is firm. And so, you know, I, I think the best days are in front of us and not behind. Uh, but we got to stand together. United we stand, divided we fall. And the people have to rise. And, and we have to make sure that our government works for us and, and, and not the other way around. Uh, that, that's the way it was designed. We the people. It's our government. We need to take it back. There you go. Congressman Zinke, thank you so much for your time, and thank you for your help. I appreciate that. Thanks, sir. We'll get you back on another time. All right. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to join us, it is 866-TALK-GUN. Pretty easy. If you'd like to send me an email, tom at guntalk.com. We do have the Twitter feed going, which, by the way, if you're not on Twitter, and I know a lot of people say, well, I don't want to do that. Let me explain at least what this does, because what I do is throughout the day, I am picking up news stories about guns and gun rights and new guns and self-defense shootings, and I do this feed. It's think of it as the uh, the pro-gun Associated Press feed. That's the the Twitter feed I have. So if you go on Twitter and you follow me there, where I am at Gun Talk, you will know what's going on hour by hour. You will be, frankly, the best informed person probably on guns and gun rights in your group, which is kind of cool. You can say, hey, did you know about the, the thing that was going on before everybody else knows about it? This thing with the ammo ban, ATF, um, if you go to the website, Georgia Carey has a really good letter, georgiacarey.org. Uh, they have a really good letter that they submitted to the ATF on there. It's called uh, GCO Files Comments on ATF's Proposal to Ban the M855. So uh, Georgia Carey will take care of that. You can do that. All right, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we have a special message for you, for Gun Talk listeners, from the Department of Homeland Security. We'll be right back. Crossbreed Holsters is broadening our product selection to serve more of your concealed carry needs. With products handmade in the USA, like the bedside backup, gun belts, and of course our world-famous Super Tuck and Mini Tuck holsters, we understand what works, and we take pride in providing you with a quality product. At Crossbreed Holsters, we live and breathe concealed carry. We make and sell products that we believe in, and products that our customers love. To see more, go to CrossbreedHolsters.com. That's CrossbreedHolsters.com. The XDM 3.8 Compact from Springfield Armory is two guns in one. Use as your concealed carry gun with a compact magazine and use the extended magazine for home defense. Carry 13 rounds of 9mm in the compact magazine and a whopping 19 rounds in the extended magazine. To see the entire family of Springfield Armory XDM pistols, go to SpringfieldArmory.com. That's SpringfieldArmory.com. 
Brownells proudly celebrates 75 years of history and heritage as the world's first choice for firearms, accessories, ammunition, and gunsmithing tools. So whether you're a gunsmith in need of parts and supplies, a new shooter looking for the perfect holster, or a skilled competitor seeking the latest gear, Brownells has what you need. And best of all, every purchase comes with the industry's only forever satisfaction guarantee. Visit us at brownells.com. All right, I told you that uh, we had a special little message. Uh, Homeland Security has fixed us up here, so I just I wanted you to be sure to get the message for Gun Talk listeners from Homeland Security. This is Milo Lardbottom, Junior Under Assistant Deputy to the Assistant Director of Deputy Affairs for the Department of Homeland Security, with a special message for listeners of Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. We know who you are. We know where you are. You're right by your radio. We have special cameras that can see into your radio. I have a special monitor built into my aluminum foil helmet. We are watching you. So don't try anything funny, buster. Well, helpful, huh? Okay, we appreciate all the help we can get from uh, DHS on that. Oh, my goodness. This whole thing with the ammo, uh, when it broke, what, a little bit, little bit over a week ago, just before the show last week, ATF proposing to ban an entire class of two two three ammo, 5.56, five, if you will, for the AR-15. Here's the background. This does not qualify under their specifications as quote unquote armor piercing ammo. There's a specific makeup of a bullet and the way it has to be made with hard materials. This ammo does not qualify for that. But they say, well, it's armor piercing. Well, you know what? That's because in gun shows for years, people have said, oh, green tip, that's armor piercing. No, it's not. Don't be stupid. Anything, any rifle will go through soft body armor. We all know this. The problem becomes. And they got to go kind of follow this way back. The problem becomes the AR-15 pistol has become so popular and the whole armor-piercing ammo law is about handgun ammo. And so they're saying, oh, well, this ammo can now be fired in handguns. Well, that's going to change the picture. Well, not really. So the question is going to be, and look, this doesn't ban all ammo. It's just that this is the less expensive, the cheaper military surplus ammo. If that supply of tens and hun- hundreds of millions of rounds goes away for us, if you take hundreds of millions of rounds out of the market, it's supply and demand. The supply goes down, the price has to go up. Simple. So, I get an email from a friend who works at a a big chain store. They sell lots of outdoor equipment, including guns. Starts with a C. And he says that, I forget what day it was last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Rush Limbaugh mentioned this on his show at about noon in the time zone where he was. And he said immediately people started coming in and buying up 223 ammo. Whatever they had, not just 855 ammo, the military surplus stuff. Anything, and then when all the two two three was gone, they started buying everything else, three oh eight, thirty odd six. It didn't matter seven six two by thirty nine, ammo that wasn't being impacted. <sighs> Are we really going to do this to ourselves again? I mean, I will freely admit, I went and bought some more two two three. Didn't buy any eight five five ammo out there. Just bought some more two two three, because well. Partly because I want it, but mainly because we use that so much for television. We can't be without it. So if that supply goes away, we <laughs> it's not good for TV to uh, point an AR-15 and yell bang. It just doesn't work as well. And the slow motion of that really is terrible. It's just awful. So, <laughs> uh, but, Oh, by the way, speaking of the GT-10, uh, GT-20 and p- pictures, I did put pictures of the new SIG uh, P220, the GT-20, our gun talk gun on the Twitter feed, and just some shots I took with the iPhone, which is actually pretty good. So we'll have a a full video up of that next week. If you want to see that, you can always go uh, check out the Twitter feed, at Gun Talk there. Uh, If you have something on your mind, a gun you've taken to the range, one you're thinking about buying, one you're thinking about getting rid of, hey, we can uh, put out the word for you. We'll 
see what we can do to help you out. Heck, who knows? Maybe I'll buy it. <laughs> That's what I need. I need another gun. 866-TALK-GUN, 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham, and you're listening to Gun Talk. Back with you, 866-TALK-GUN, or just dial one Tom Talk Gun, get you in there. Also, my email, Tom at GunTalk.com. Brian's with us out of uh, Alabama on line two. Hello, Brian. You're on Gun Talk. Uh, greetings, and as far as your question is, what, what do you do when you see that no firearms ticker? What mm-hmm. I do is it's different from the uh, list that you did. I Immediately, I do not bring the firearm into the, into the building. It, it, if it's like a first time I've seen this, I go in and see if I like if it's a restaurant, if I like whatever they're producing. Mm-hmm. If I don't, then I don't worry about it. I don't go back. But if I do like what they're doing, I call the proprietor or leave them some kind of message and ask them, do you have people that have firearms on staff to where I feel safe in this environment? Ah. Uh, so that's just uh, one of the things that I do, and I've done it a few places, because, and then a lot of places I decided not to go back to because... I didn't like the food. <laughs> well, now, have you ever gotten a response back from them when you asked the question about do they have armed people to protect you? I've had a couple. I've had a couple in Huntsville that uh, have said, uh, yes, the, uh, yes, the owners and, and, uh, and also certain people have those there. So those places, I honor their wishes, and I do not bring them in because I have had an adequate response to my question. Hmm. Okay. So are you, when you're carrying, Brian, let me ask you this. When you go into a store, are you kind of having a heightened awareness of looking for signs? Or do you sometimes find yourself going into a place and didn't see it or just forgot to look? Uh, no, I, I, I consistently look and then I tend to shy away from places that have those signs on there, unless I really like them for some reason. Mm-hmm. Okay. By the way, what do you carry? Uh, just a little chief special, thirty eight. Well, I wouldn't say just in front of that. If you know how to use a uh, thirty eight well, snubby, that, that will sure get you out of a lot of trouble. Well, that's why that, that's why my family and my and my daughter. I just bought one for her when she turned twenty one. Even though she could mm-hmm. carry younger, that way we got a consensus on the how do you say ammunition in the house. <laughs> I like that, a consensus on ammunition, so you can swap out ammo if you need to. Exactly right. Now, let me ask you one other question. Now, what kind of holster rig, how are you carrying? I've just got, I, I just got a little I, I got a little one that goes across my fanny, and I've not yet figured out what uh, my daughter wants. I think it'll be, she'll leave hers in her purse. Okay. Uh, purse carry, of course, is problematic if you, and I'm sure you probably would do this anyway, but make sure if the gun's in a purse, it's also in a holster in the purse to keep everything out of the trigger guard. Good point. So that, all right. Yeah. Cause it's a holster, a gun that's flopping around in a, in a gun, a purse rather. It can get lipstick and get any kind of keys. Anything else could get hung up in the trigger, the trigger guard. But also, frankly, purses are grungy. You get lint and crud in there, and all that stuff gets in the uh, the gun, and that's that's just nasty and not good for guns. So anyway, at least some form of holster, or sheath, or something to. Uh, well, for one thing, you know what it does. Also, it protects the trigger guard, so that when a hand goes in to pull to grab the pistol, the finger doesn't go inside the trigger guard. So when the gun's coming out of the purse, you don't have a finger inside the trigger guard. Imagine trying to pull it out quickly. And the gun gets hung up on something in the process of pulling it out. If you've got a finger inside the trigger guard, there is a decent chance you're going to end up pulling the trigger with that gun in a purse pointed who knows where. So again, a holster inside the purse, good way to go. We actually work on that on the uh, First Person Defender and Gun Talk shows. We we do a lot of that and we do some uh, shooting out of purses. Something else to consider. That's, once again, where training comes in. But nothing wrong with a revolver. 
I do like my semi-autos, I got to tell you. When we come back, we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of different semi-autos from SIG, some parts kits to make your SIG even better, some competition shooting, and yes, 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 we're going to talk a little bit about this brand new P220 in 10 millimeter, and why the 10 millimeter? That's the question. If you have a 10, we'd like to know, why do you like your 10? 